Hey guys, Mr. Mill here, back with another video, and I'm here to discuss a project I want to do with every single grade, and it's a scavenger hunt. So I've been looking at my phone a lot, and um, the, the main thing I see uh, to have kids more entertained and less bored is a scavenger hunt. So what the world's doing right now is a teddy bear scavenger hunt, and basically what happens is that you're supposed to put a teddy bear outside your window, and then it's kind of like a game, so you walk around the neighborhood with your family or just by yourself, and um, you kind of just spot and count how many teddy bears that you see. So I got inspired by that. So what I'm going to do right now is show you guys how to do the scavenger hunt and how it's going to work. So it'll be really fun. Hopefully Homestead community can do it too. So it could be a whole community thing and uh, it works for everyone. So let's get started. So first of all, you need a few things. You need a piece of paper, pencil, paper, anything to write with, and uh, some colors. Um, you don't need colors if you don't need to, but you do need tape in order to put this in the window or um, something, or, or something or less like that. Zentangle art is really cool and I want to read the definition that I wrote down, I got from the internet. So, Zentangle art. The Zentangle method is an easy to learn, relaxing and fun way to create beautiful images by drawing structured patterns. We call these patterns tangles. You create tangles with combinations of dots, lines, simple curves and orbs. These simple shapes are the elements of strokes in all Zentangle art. See over here? I mean, now you can. Um, these are examples of some Zentangle art patterns. So what I did is I printed out a couple variations. I have a couple easy ones here. And I have a couple more uh, challenging ones over here. And if you guys want to see some more uh, Zentangle examples, uh, I'll probably try to populate the screen right now with a couple examples over here. But um, here are some examples I have here. And I'm going to use these examples to um, help us with our project and how we're going to do this as a scavenger hunt for the whole community. So let me just switch these places. So first things first, you need a pencil. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a husky paw. Uh, there's many methods to draw a husky paw. I'm going to draw uh, two versions. The first one I'm going to do is an easy version. Husky paw, the easiest way possible is just to draw an oval. Okay, an oval is basically a not perfect circle. And then I'm going to draw four smaller versions, but they're more vertical, just like this. So two on the side and two on this side. Ta-da! Husky paw. Make sure it's as big enough as a paper, as big as you can, so people can see it from far away. Instead of doing an oval like this, I am going to draw more of a bump in the middle, on the top, just like this, and then I'm gonna curve down like that, okay? Now, for the paws, I'm gonna start on top, make sure it's divided in half. I'm gonna draw two big ones on top, two ovals. If you wanna create a little bit of a little end down on top, you can. I'll try to make it symmetrical to that one. Here we go. A little more indent on the top. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to bring it lower. So here's one right here. And then my other one right here. And ta-da! Alright, two husky paws. I'm going to use the advanced one more anyway. I'm going to trace my husky paw as best of my ability. I'm going to try to make sure these lines are nice and thick. Just like this. Ta-da! Pick over here. There's people walking upstairs. Probably that's why. I'm not sure you guys can hear that. <laughs> Alright. Let's do the bottom half of the paw. And hopefully we can finish before this marker dies out. Bah, there you go. Husky paw, now it's time to decorate it with some Zentangle patterns. But before we do that, let's start dividing up the sections so we can actually do patterns. Where you kind of just like divide in half like this, or like this. I've seen kids kind of like divide it up really interestingly, like with curves, kind of like that. You might have run out of space. Um, I've seen kids divide it like this before with just like simple stripes. All right, so some things you want to avoid when you're doing this, when you're dividing up your sections of your paw, you don't want to do sections where they're like too small like that because then the patterns will be super tiny so if i were to do like i don't know swirls over here like this like that it's going to be too small you don't want that to happen so you want to make sure your pattern edges or pattern sections are nice and big like this and like actually you know what there you go kind of like that so look how big these sections are they're perfect size so maybe i'll just divide this paw just in half like this Maybe I'll divide this section like this. Maybe I'll make that symmetrical. There you go, almost looks like a face, kinda. 
like this, and then I'm gonna divide this one in half, and then I'm gonna divide it into th thirds actually. There you go. All right, so now I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I have 11 sections for Zentangle patterns, so I need to have 11 different designs. Now, they don't have to be different. Uh, you can do the same design, but in different color if you want. Um, I am requiring you guys to do at least five or more Zentangle patterns. Some happy faces, really simple. We got waves, stripes, we got checkered clouds, um, more solid stripes, uh, like curved stripes, a couple squares. Uh, hearts and uh, flowers. So we have a couple patterns here to go from. Let's try to choose like two or three and we'll go from there. So I'm gonna do the little triangle pattern in this section. I'm gonna draw some triangles up and upside down, maybe right side up. Make sure they all fit. I apologize if you hear my son crying. <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. That looks really good. I like that. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, I think I'm gonna switch colors, I think? No, I'll keep the same color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color it in. Now, by definition, Zentangle is supposed to be relaxing, which I am. And uh, the idea is to make these patterns nice and enjoyable to complete. And it doesn't, there's no rules in making these patterns. You can kind of just do any pattern you want. Um, these are just examples. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of trying to color the outside. I could have chosen a different color, so the triangles could have been like a nice pink uh, outline, but um, I, just have, I just decided to go like this. And uh, it is going to take you guys quite some time. Now, this isn't due uh, uh, quite uh, quite yet. Uh, basically, in order to make this uh, scavenger hunt work, uh, let's say everyone has to do this by the weekend. So that way, if everyone hangs this hung up by the weekend, hopefully you guys can take a walk around, maybe the following week or that weekend, and see what everyone has gotten done. It'll be really fun. Come on, color my triangles. There we go. All right. I'll finish this one up. Just like that. Oh, that's pretty pretty. Now, um, that's one done. I got ten more to go. So here we go. Let's just speed up the video. All right, all right, I'm done. So this is my completed uh, husky paw. Uh, now, when it comes to this, uh, you could decorate the outside any way you want. If you want to leave it blank like this, you can. I've seen people take a pair of scissors and they can kind of cut out the design. If you guys don't you know what I mean, I'll show you guys right now. I'm gonna do it real quick for you guys. So you can kind of cut it out and make it look like a more three-dimensional paw like that. If you want to cut it like that, you can. Um, I can show you guys what I would do if I were you. We... We miss you. Exclamation point. Watch out. All right. So I'm not going to do the cutting method personally, but I think it'll be really good. Oh, and I made a mess on my table. Pull it up or just stick it up normally. Put it in the back of your project and uh, put it on the window. But then it wouldn't make sense. So on your window, so you have to... I guess on your window you have to go on this side and then pop that way so that way you can face the right side. So anyways, 
You guys know what to do now. I'm gonna put it on the back so it can stick to this table. And then hang it up on the most visible window. So uh, a window that's facing the backyard or the side yard might not work. So if it can face somewhere like a sidewalk or the street, that would work best. So what you wanna do is finish this at least by this Saturday. So this Saturday is, what's Saturday? All right, this Saturday is May 2nd. So if you guys can hang this up by May 2nd, and then leave it up there until May 9th, which is the following Saturday. That'd be great. That way families can uh, have fun with this nice cool game that I created based on the things that we saw online and what people have been doing around the world with the teddy bears. So I think that's really fun, particular to our community in, in particular. And I think you guys will have fun with it too. Now, if you want to do something like this at home and you don't have the materials, or if you want to print one out instead, I'll make a printable version if you guys want. And then I uh, will go from there. I hope you guys have fun with this scavenger hunt. See you guys in the next video.